Good evening. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Kettering City Council. Today's date is May 9th, 2023. We're going to start our meeting tonight with a presentation of the colors by the Kettering Police Department. Next week is Police Memorial Week, and uh, since we will not have session then, we're going to have this honor tonight. So, present colors. Wheel right, move. Detail, halt. Present, halt. Post, colors. Present Holmes. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Detail, order, Holmes. Right, face. Forward, march. Left. Thank you. Um, I would like to call attention to the fact that we will be honoring our fallen officers um, with a special ceremony this Thursday. I believe it's at 3 o'clock. Okay, right out here on the uh, plaza. Okay, thank you. Bow your heads for an invocation. Dear Lord, we pray for unity. We have come together as a group united in passion and purpose. Help us maintain unity as we discuss certain matters and implement projects. We pray for open hearts and minds that will promote and accept better ideas. We seek your honor in everything we do and say, and we ask for your blessings for our community and for all who need our prayers and assistance. Amen. Amen. Okay. Next, I would like to recognize our Miami Valley Communication Council TV operator, Mike Saproni. Mike, thank you for your assistance. He's waving up there. Okay. Um, Mr. Duke has an excused absence this meeting, but we have a special treat for you. He is recovered to the point that he's able to send us a message. So I promised him I would read it for you tonight. Dear residents, I have missed a number of meetings since January, and I think it's important for me to explain why. As you might know, I am in the hospital recovering from HSV-1, viral encephalopathy. This virus attacks a person's brain, and in my case, it damaged a part of the left side, causing some memory loss. The inactivity has led me with the inability to use the majority of my muscles which I am working with rehab to recover from. In January and February, I was in a coma, trying to fight the virus, and fortunately, I won. Since then, I have been in the hospital recovering. I wanted you to know <clears throat> how serious this illness is and let you know I am really sorry that I have not been able to participate in the activities of our city. Thank you for all the warm wishes, visits, cards, and prayers. Councilman Bruce Duke, District 4. So all I can say is um, 
this is a man who couldn't talk at all a month ago, and he is able to dictate that to us tonight. So, um, God, we thank you um, for bringing Bruce back, and I honestly think he will be back. I never thought I'd say those words, but he'll be back. So, thank you for your attention to that. Mrs. Fisher, can I call on you for a motion to approve the minutes? Yes, ma'am. I have reviewed both the council and workshop minutes for April the 25th, and I do find them in order, and I move for their approval. Second. Okay. Um, the motion has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Kleepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay, we will now have pro any proclamations or special presentations. We do have a proclamation for Bike Month, and I would like to call on Mrs. Hall, who is on the Bike Committee, um, to read the proclamation. Yes. So happy to read this for, uh, with the representation here from the Bike Committee, such a stellar and well-organized and efficient group, does such a great job. It's a pleasure to serve on the committee. So we're proclaiming as a city that whereas the bicycle is an economic, healthy, convenient, and environmentally sound form of transportation and an excellent tool for recreation and enjoyment of Kettering's scenic beauty, and whereas biking is a lifeline for so many people during their daily lives, whether it's the primary way people commute to essential jobs, the way people relieve stress and decompress after being home for long periods of time, or the way children get much needed exercise when schools are closed, and whereas creating a bicycling bicycling friendly community has been shown to improve citizens' health and well-being, traffic safety, and wear and tear on roads, and whereas the city of Kettering's commitment to create a bicycle friendly community is evident in recent award designations, including the city receiving the bronze level bicycle friendly award from the League of American Bicyclists. And whereas the city will continue to foster relationships with local organizations, including Bike Miami Valley, Five Rivers Metro Parks, the Dayton Cycle Club and the League of American Bicyclists to enhance bike safety within the Kettering community. And whereas with the help of various groups and organizations, public awareness of bicycle safety will continue to grow and will improve the health and safety for everyone on the road, which will allow Kettering community to continue to be a premier destination for cycling. Now, therefore, uh, Peggy Lehner, mayor of city of Kettering, Ohio, on behalf of city council in this community does hereby proclaim May 2023 to be bike month in the city of Kettering, Ohio, and encourage all citizens to recognize the importance of bicycle safety and to be more aware of cyclists on our streets and roads. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Hall. Um, and I would like to call up Kendall Drager, who's chairperson of the Bike Committee, and Brent Devitt, president of Cycle Kettering, who will be accepting the proclamation this evening. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> yeah. On behalf of the BPAC and Cycle Kettering, we, we appreciate the, the pro proclamation. Real, real briefly, some of the BPAC activities this past year, we made a recommendation to improve the safety of Route Number 19 as it crosses Marshall. We, we uh, shared a booth with Cycle Kettering at five of the city events to help promote both walking and bicycling in the city. And we also initiated a, a data collection project in order to count bicycles on certain streets throughout the city. Mm -hmm. Great. Hi, I'm Brent Devitt. I'm the president of Cycle Kettering. It's a new organization here in Kettering to promote uh, and advocate for safe cycling in our city. And so we've been meeting regularly for the last two years. Uh, we've jointly sponsored a booth at many uh, Kettering events. And our big project this past year has been to sponsor, in partnership with the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department, a series of five community rides that uh, take uh, Kettering citizens through the community and demonstrate how it's safe and fun to, to cycle in Kettering. So we thank you for your support. Thank you, that's all great work. 
I've taken my bike out a couple times now in anticipation of a bike ride, and it starts raining every time I do, so. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> <clears throat> um, public hearings, we have none this evening. Um, this is the point in the agenda that if anyone would like to address any issues, any legislation um, that is on the agenda for tonight, they may do so at this time. Uh, anyone wishing to speak before council with comments or new information about the legislation on tonight's agenda may do so now. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Speakers must state their name and address. Comments should be addressed to council. If you have comments that are not about the agenda, about the legislation on tonight's agenda, there will be an opportunity for those to be heard later in the meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to come down and address council? Okay. Seeing no one at this time, we'll move on to public ordinances and second reading. Your Honor, I have an ordinance to amend the text of various sections of the city of Kettering zoning code. It is requested by the Planning and Development Department and I move for its approval. Second. Okay, um, let's see, Mr. Greeson. Yes, uh, Your Honor, um, you've heard a presentation on this item, and this is just an additional reading. Um, uh, this uh, change in the zoning code uh, corrects and clarifies uh, and omits areas of conflict. It serves to introduce best practices and modernize and expand the flexibility in some of our code. It also modifies the permitted use table. Uh, by removing certain uses from the business park and business districts which uh, take up uh, significant land while providing minimal em employment opportunities. Um, uh, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Uh. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, call the roll, please. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. We now have ordinances in second reading, I mean, sorry, uh, resolutions. Authorizing, next one is to go to Tony. Resolutions. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to contract with PepsiCo Beverage Sales, LLC, for the purchase of non-alcoholic Pepsi products for sale at the Phrase Pavilion for the 2023 season. The estimated cost is $60,000. Those funds are available. It's requested by Parks, Recreation, and Culture Arts Department. I move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Mr. Greeson, do you have any comments? Yes, Your Honor. The phrase season is upon us, and we're so excited. There's a great lineup of concerts, um, and so uh, this is one of the purchases necessary to make sure that our uh, customers have the opportunity to um, purchase concessions uh, when they're uh, going to one of their uh, favorite events or concerts. Um, the uh, low better in this case for uh, beverages was PepsiCo. Um, purchases will include a variety of non-alcoholic beverages. Um, they were the low better after obtaining quotes. Um, there is an option to renew for two additional years uh, after this year, um, and the budgeted amount uh, is a approximately $60,000 based on estimated volume of sales for the 2023 phrase season. Okay, thank you. Any questions about Pepsi? Okay, call the roll. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to apply for the Ohio Law Enforcement Bulletproof Vest Program grant through the Ohio Attorney General's office. This is being requested by the police department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we are endeavoring to purchase uh, 16 uh, bulletproof vests at about $1,300 a vest, a little over that. Um, and we are always uh, seeking grant opportunities uh, to offset uh, local expenditures. And in this case, we're applying uh, to the Ohio Attorney General's office uh, if successful or when successful, um, it will, this grant would reimburse 75% uh, of the uh, cost of each vest. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a cost sharing agreement with the Board of Education of the Kettering City School District for the safety section program for the 2023-2024 school year. This is requested by the engineering department. I move for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the city of Kettering and the Kettering Board of Education, as you know, have for, for a long time shared the cost of services for the adult crossing guards and um, perform crossing guard duties um, at designated intersections uh, and school zones. Um, it's part of our Kettering Safe Route to Schools program. It's an excellent partnership, uh, and this uh, resolution authorizes me to continue that in the upcoming year. Any questions? See none, call the roll. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Ms. Hall? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a fire prevention grant from FM Global. Estimated cost is $2,319. The amount budgeted is zero. This is being requested by the fire department. I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, this uh, We make efforts to ensure that uh, residents who are unable to provide uh, for themselves uh, have uh, safe uh, and working smoke detectors. We particularly do this um, when our um, uh, firefighters and paramedics are on runs and inter are in a, in a home and see that um, maybe they don't have a smoke detector or a working smoke detector. Um, this would help us uh, assist with that program. The grant amount awarded uh, is $2,319 and there are no matching funds required. Chief, would you like to add anything? Thank you, sir. This is uh, encompassed along with the donation received from the Dayton uh, Firefighters Credit Union for CO detectors. So when we're on emergency incidents and we notice um, no working smoke or CO detectors in our house, our directive is to make sure our members leave them with a working smoke and CO detector, and then they work with the Red Cross to have them mounted or installed in the house. So we're going to try to continue that program. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Ms. Tuval? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to contract for an assessment center with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. The estimated cost and budget both are $28,000. It is requested by the fire department, and I move for approval. Second. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. Um, as part of our promotional processes in the fire department, um, we conduct what's called an assessment center, in this case using the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, we have an upcoming uh, fire captain vacancy, um, and uh, part of the process uh, will include an assessment center. I'll ask the chief to briefly summarize what that entails, um, uh, but the expense would be uh, $14,000. Thank you, sir. So the, the assessment for the captain's position is a situational awareness assessment. So they're putting through fire scenarios, tested on it, evaluated by high fire chiefs, scored as part of that, and that is 40% uh, or 60% of the score in the promotion process. And we have three times the number of applicants we've had on the last three lists, which is why it's over the, the $25,000 threshold needing to be read at council tonight. So we're happy with a large number of people wanting to be promoted as well. Great, thank you. Any questions, Chief? Okay, call the roll. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duval? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Your Honor, I have a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase traffic control equipment from Baldwin and Sowers and to use competitive bargaining and negotiated quotes to contract for construction of the school zone flashers, Schroyer and Glengarry, Project City, Project Number 
The uh, estimated cost is $50,000. Uh, that is the amount available, and it's requested by Engineering Department. I move for approval. Second. Okay. Mr. Bergstresser. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the height and safety of middle school and high school students, the City of Kettering uh, Traffic Engineering Division um, is recommending the installation of three sets of school zone flashers, uh, for one for Fairmont High School, another for Van Buren Middle School, and a third for the Kettering Middle School and Indian Riffle Elementary School campus. Uh, these installations will align with state law and the Ohio Department of Transportation standards for school zones. Uh, the zones will have flashing lights and they are proposed for uh, Schroyer Road between Storms and Schuyler along the frontage of Van Buren Middle School. Uh, from Lincoln Park, uh, the intersection of Lincoln Park and Schroyer uh, to Rock Hill Avenue, um, just uh, where the at the north entrance uh, and exit to the high school where buses uh, park and leave uh, during school time, and then also along Glengarry Drive uh, along the frontage of uh, Kettering Middle School uh, and Indian Riffle. Uh, upon approval of the uh, resolution tonight, and we are recommending approval, uh, we will begin uh, to implement uh, this project. Uh, with the goal of having them uh, installed for the upcoming school year starting in August, uh, subject to contractor availability and uh, the availability of materials. Um, so again, we recommend approval of this resolution tonight. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions for Steve? Really great that that's happening to keep our kids safe on that road. Well done. Thank you. Can you call the roll? Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, I have a resolution to make supplemental appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2023. I move for approval. Second. Okay. Any Comments from Mr. Bergstresser? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have two items uh, this evening for supplemental appropriations. The first is in the amount of $15,018.30 uh, is re being requested for the Economic Development Department uh, for expenditures related to the recent sale of approximately 28 acres uh, in the Miami Valley Research Park uh, located at the northwest corner of uh, County Line Road, Shaker Town, and Research uh, uh, Boulevard intersection. Uh, the other is uh, in relation to a previous resolution on tonight's agenda of uh, $2,319 uh, to accept uh, the Global Fire, Fire Prevention Grant uh, for the smoke detectors that were previously mentioned. Be happy to answer any questions. Yep. Any questions? Seeing none, call the roll. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Duvall? Yes. Mrs. Fisher? Yes. Mr. Klepas? Yes. Mayor Lehner? Yes. Okay. We have one ordinance tonight, first reading, I believe. No, Bob, it's you? No. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, okay. We don't. All right. <laughs> um, we will now move to certifications and petitions. You call on Sean Kaczynski. Your Honor, we did not have any certifications or petitions this evening. Okay, thank you. And we will now move on to the manager's report and the community update. Mr. Greeson. Yes, Your Honor. I'm pleased to give another community update. Um, coming to the phrase, as I talked about uh, earlier, uh, phrase season is upon us and uh, we have a great lineup. Um, you may have seen this past week, uh, Clint Black announced as well as the gin blossoms. <laughs> Uh, just an, a few other highlights, Tesla, August 1st, the Happy Together Tour, August 10th, uh, and Dave Cause and Friends, August 12th. Of course, tickets can be purchased to all events at the Phrase, at our uh, ticket office, at the Fanfare store at Town & Country, uh, online or by phone. Um, please uh, enjoy an event or a concert at the Phrase this summer. Uh, the Dorothy uh, Lane Road um, project continues, um, and it's obviously been challenging uh, both for uh, the county as well as the, the residents in that area. Um, we're, we're here to announce that uh, East Dorothy Lane will be closed to 
through traffic between Far Hills and Schroyer beginning May 9th uh, from 9 to 4. Um, continued installation of water services onto the new water main that's been installed. Um, they're anticipating, uh, Montgomery County is, that it'll be four to five days um, and detour signage will be in place. Uh, if we could pull up the detour, this is uh, the temporary vehicle detour that will be posted during that time frame. Uh, as you uh, heard earlier this evening, um, uh, with your proclamation. Um, it is uh, bike month where we celebrate uh, by riding to work for fitness or fun. Uh, Sunday, May 7th is National Ride a Bike Day uh, and Friday, May 20th is Bike to Work Day. Um, uh, the cycle Kettering community rides that were referenced uh, earlier this evening start on May 21st. Um, and you can uh, register for those. Uh, and there's a, we encourage people to check out uh, the bike map uh, on our website uh, as they prepare to uh, hopefully join one of the community rides or participate in one of the activities during bike month. Um, recently, um, some of you attended an event where you had the opportunity to hear from uh, some of the graduates of our micro enterprise program and how successful it's uh, been. Um, we have two great opportunities for small businesses in Kettering uh, through this program. And I'm gonna put uh, Ms. Shrimp on the spot if she would like to say a little bit about the micro enterprise program, we would encourage small businesses to participate. Okay, well, this is a partnership between um, the Board of Community Relations, the Community Development Department for the City of Kettering, and the Economic Development Department. There are two components to the program. Uh, there are free technical assistance classes. Those are open to anybody. Uh, we have one tomorrow. It's going to be on um, writing a business plan, and there will be a template for a business plan and an instructor from SCORE. Um, and then we have two more coming up uh, subsequent Wednesdays on marketing your business, Wednesday, May 17th, and then lessons learned panel from veteran business owners on May 24th. Those will be held here at the Government Center. Um, then uh, on May 25th, we'll open up an application process for a forgivable loan program that you can use for the items that are listed on the flyer. Um, this will be a competitive process and we will look through the applications and score them and you must uh, earn a certain score uh, in order to receive the loan. Uh, I will point out that you can get extra points by attending this and other sessions so that you know the goal is to give um, the forgivable loan to people who are doing the work uh, and putting in the effort to getting their business started. Um, or. I should say, who are already um, have, have a business uh, here in Kettering. So uh, if they have any questions, they can contact me or Angela uh, Rockman in our community development office. Thank you. Are you done? Uh, not quite. Um, <laughs> just want to highlight Memorial Day on Monday, May 29th uh, at the Beavertown Cemetery um, in the and, and uh, that's a partnership, uh, partnership's a theme, that's a partnership with the American Legion. Um, also, uh, please join us for our community block party on May 31st from six to eight. And I believe lastly, um, we wanna highlight the free summer food program, free lunch to children ages zero to 18, June 5th through August 7th. Um, and information uh, is available here on your screen. And now I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you. <clears throat> Let's see. We'll now move on to, why don't we, first we have other business not on the written agenda. Um, if there is anyone who wish to address council tonight um, who has not had an opportunity earlier to do it, I would invite them down at this point. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to address council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to council reports. Mrs. Fisher. 
Well, Your Honor, I'll apologize a little bit, but there were several events that I attended um, just by myself, and so I want to uplift all of those. Um, the first one being that our awesome employee council here that within the city had a walk for wellness, and it was a fantastic event where we did a, a two-mile loop, and I met a lot of awesome employees that were out there getting their exercise at lunchtime. That was on the 26th. 27th, um, Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission had a spring dinner with awards. It was really cool. Um, the win One of the winners was Rebecca Benet. And as they were telling her story, she started her career here in Kettering, Ohio. And so I was like, well, that was very cool, you know, but and then she got all grown up and had a great <laughs> career and uh, was a awarded uh, a fantastic award that evening. Uh, moving on to the fourth, I was able to um, go to the Alder Key Club and give the award to Annabelle Hacker, who was our mayor's awardee, who was unable to be at our council meeting. And so that was really neat because we were able to recognize her in front of all her peers. And that was just a fantastic time. Early in the morning, I must say, but it was a good time. <laughs> On the 5th, um, uh, attaboy to our honor guard. Um, as I attended the, the Montgomery uh, County Law Enforcement Memorial um, Ceremony, Every year that one just, I'll say, tears me up. Um, as we recognize all of those uh, fallen um, officers, specifically our, our Kettering officer, Paul Metzger, and a, and a very good dear friend of mine, Mary Bell. So that's always a very emotional one for me. Last but not least, Art mm -hmm. on the Playground. What a fantastic Parks and Rec event. Um, this year it wasn't freezing cold, it wasn't sleeting, it was sunny, and it was packed. There were tons of kids, tons of parents um, putting together their crafts. Um, to no surprise to the mayor, I had one great grandson that was good and going from station to station, and the other one took off into the woods. And so I thought I lost him at some point, um, but our habitat um, area is just fantastic and great kid-friendly, and that event was very well attended, and it was fantastic. Is the one who was very good and stayed put the one that's two, year, two weeks old? No, actually, it was the nine-year-old <laughs> and that crazy four-year-old loves the woods. Easy. But the honeysuckle's down thanks to our <coughs> service, uh, cities of service, but uh, good time. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Klepatz. Uh Thank you. I want to uh, add a few uh, comments about Becky Benet. Uh, the city manager and I both attended her retirement celebration uh, on the 28th, and uh, what, what was very interesting about Becky is that uh, she was recruited uh, and, and, well, she applied for and became the executive director of Five Rivers Metro Parks back in 2011. And she came here from Arizona. But she got to Arizona, as you mentioned, after uh, being mentored originally in the parks and recreation world by uh, a legend of Kettering Parks and Recreation, and that was Joe Homewood, and she mentioned that, obviously, at, at the uh, celebration. So she really got her start here, uh, made all that move across country at one time, and uh, then she came back here and has done, did a, just a great job. And the, the things that they said about uh, her and the work she did uh, to keep uh, the Five Rivers Metro Parks kind of the envy of the country, uh, basically, and what we're doing with our parks there. Uh, on the 29th, uh, quite a few of us went over to uh, Christ Church, uh, and Lisa Duvall uh, helped organize the Kettering Centerville a a Pancake Breakfast. And, uh, uh, raised a lot of uh, a lot of good funds, I understand, uh, and we we enjoyed that. Uh, on May May the fifth, I I went to the ice show over at our ice arena, and um, I, I I have never been to that before. Um, I think most of MVCC, including Mike, who was in the crow's nest there, he's up at our crow's nest. They they had all kind of uh, broadcasting of that event. And I never uh, thought too much about it in the past. And when I got there, I was shocked. The parking lot was packed. Mm. The ice arena was packed uh, with, with folks. And it was a, a great program called uh, Circus, the Greatest Show on Ice. And of course, the performers uh, were all from uh, either uh, uh, events that they participated in, like ice hockey maybe. There was ice hockey kits. 
There was uh, folks that are in uh, ice class, ice skating classes, and it was it was a great great show. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank goodness my wife reminded me, you ought to take a jacket with you. It's going, it was cold <laughs> in there. And one of the highlights was watching the guy drive that Zamboni uh, during the halftime and yeah. <laughs> skid around that place. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and I also want to mention, as part, part of National Police Week, and you said something about uh, Mary Bell. Uh, I went to last Saturday a luncheon at the presidential put on by the Daughters of the American Revolution, and they honored six retired or former Dayton police officers, all females. And uh, it, was, it was quite a nice event, and Mary Bell was given, uh, one, one, her family was given, given one of those awards. So that was uh, very nice, another nice event in Kettering, and brought a lot of people into town. In our words of wisdom for tonight concerning shopping and Kettering, <laughs> is you can't buy happiness, but you can buy local. And that's kind of the same thing. That's all I have. That's awesome. Thank you, Tony. Jill? Um, there was good news and some bad news for Kettering, I, as I see it this week. The bad news was, um, once again, we're dealing with school shooting stuff and two threats in one week, um, keeping parents in terror all the time and um, got an email the, the night of the great success of STEAM night from the Kettering City Schools late at night that Fairmont was closing school the next day. And um, you know, many parents like myself considered keeping their kids home entirely from any other school in Kettering. Firearms, number one cause of death for children in America and um, it just boggles the mind that we're the only country in the world, in the history of the world, who's had that problem. And it's just a, it's a bipartisan desire to have more safety checks and background checks on guns. And it's just, I can't figure out why that hasn't happened. I do wanna give kudos though to the Kettering Police Department. 14 hours after a threat was made by the 14 year old a couple days ago, you guys found out who it was, and it was from an anonymous post on Instagram, as I understand. So that's pretty impressive, and you kept a lot of kids safe by doing that. The good news was the STEAM night was really amazing and such a positive step for um, the, the Kettering schools when the U.S. is really declining in science and math. Um, they're making positive steps. My eight-year-old was talking about it for weeks, couldn't wait to go, had an amazing time. And they got twice as many families there as they expected and it was just a great night. And um, also regarding Kettering uh, Fairmont, they are baseball conference champs. Mm -hmm. So hats off to them for that. And um, just wanted to also mention there's still lots of spots with our Parks and Rec summer child care program, really great summer option. Um, and uh, however, there is still a big need for child care and Kettering and look forward to hearing good news on, on that front in coming weeks. That's it. Okay, thank you. It's just uh, nothing for me to add this session. Okay. Um, I would like to start off by thanking everyone here who was able to attend the Pancake Breakfast for Kiwanis. As Tony mentioned, it was a great event and we did raise a good amount of money. So thank you. It was wonderful. Um, looking forward to this Thursday. It is our last uh, Leadership Academy class of the year. And the graduation will be Thursday evening at NCR Country Club. And I hope to see all of you there. Um, for those who can't attend, um, our friends at MVCC will be there live streaming it, mostly for the benefit of Bruce Duke. <laughs> um, I want to say that it was an incredibly difficult day for parents in Kettering, and probably not just for the parents, for the staff, for everyone who works with the schools. Um, it, everyone up here is a parent, and I think we all know that fear, um, that anxiety. but. I want to thank the schools for their communication to the parents. It was great. Um, and I want to thank the police department. You guys did a great job. And I'm glad our kids are safe another day. 
and that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, all of you, for attending the so many events that make Kettering special. And, uh, it would be nice if all seven of us could show up to every one of those, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Um, I was able to attend the opening groundbreaking ceremony for Children's Medical Center new mental health facility. Um, as, as Jill mentioned, um, guns are the number one um, cause of death in our children. Um, but one of the side effects of guns, I think, and all of the violence and COVID has been the tremendous amount of mal mental illness that our kids are struggling through. Um, this facility at Children's um, is going to provide us absolutely world-class mental health care for the kids in our area. Unfortunately, as large as this $110 million building is and the number of beds that it will be uh, offering to kids, it is still not going to meet the need that we have in our community. Um, so we, we have to look for other ways to keep our children safe. Um, not just from gunfire, but from um, the fear of where they're going, what no one knows. No one knows what's, what's causing all this, but um, particularly special about this ribbon cutting yesterday was the governor was there, was nice, but the Hope Squad from Kettering High School was there, and a young lady from the Hope Squad actually gave the keynote address talking about her own mental health struggles and how the Hope Squad at the school has really helped her, um, pulled her through. And she was now up there speaking to 300 community leaders and very poised young lady. Um, on a lighter side, Saturday night, Mayor's Party with a Purpose, formerly known as the, as the Mayor's Ball. Um, we're not having dancing this year because we're having the dueling pianos, which are really super fun, um, engaging um, duo of piano players who will keep us up on our feet, but uh, uh, it just should be a really great time. Fabulous um, auction items, both silent and live auction. Um, one of our council members who will go unmentioned um, has been out visiting every bar in the city um, and getting free rounds of drinks. And then she's got a party bus lined up to take everyone around. And then Chief Protzman is going to make sure that they all get home. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> so um, tickets are still available because it's not a sit down dinner this time. We're able to, to take reservations almost up until the final minute. Um, so if you've given any thought and set that invitation aside and didn't do anything about it, probably need to get it in the mail tomorrow or maybe um, call the number on the invitation. Go to the Kettering Rotary uh, website, who are the prime sponsors of this event, and um, they have information on how you can order tickets at this last minute. So. Um, the uh, beneficiary of the contributions this year is Bridget's Path. Um, once again, dealing with one of those serious issues, um, babies born with um, addiction. Um, so, but we're gonna have a great time raising money for those kids. So, and I want a final a shout out to Missy Mae Walters and Brenda Stansfield, who have done a fabulous job organizing this event. So. Thank you. Um, with no further business to come before council, our next council meeting will be on May 23rd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A meeting is adjourned two weeks from now. Yeah. <laughs>